Well, hello, hello, hello out there to all you beautiful Black podcasters. My name is Latrice Sampson Richards. I am a award-winning podcast producer and the host of the 2023 Black Podcasting Awards. And as usual, I am very excited to be here with y'all today. We definitely have a treat for you all today, a little behind the scenes on the thing thing, okay? I am joined by Lance John, who is the director of the Black Podcasting Awards. Notice I didn't just say the 2023 Black Podcasting Awards. I said he's <laughs> the director, okay, of the Black Podcasting Awards show ceremony, okay? Yes. Everything that y'all have seen over the last years, last, what, has been three years, four yes, years? Me. Yeah, this will be like the fourth, I would say. Yeah, fourth so, year. Fourth. Yeah, everything yeah, that you all have seen, every minute, every millisecond, every graphic, every transition, every everything. Yes, is because of Mr. Lance John. So, Lance, welcome. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining me tonight. Yes, no problem. It's my pleasure for sure. Yeah. So Lance be real low key, y'all. So, you know, <laughs> I, I, I text Lance and I was like, hey, I want to talk about how awesome the freaking ceremony is. Would you like to join me? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. We could do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at my calendar to make sure that, uh, you know, I have the time and everything like that. Sometimes it just kind of that's usually what I'm doing. It's like, uh, let me look at my second brain to see right, <laughs> where, right. where I can do things or not. But you are just me. generally like a chill guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you're a really chill guy. And I really enjoy, you know, last year, last year, as you all know, I also hosted the Black Podcasting Awards. That was my first time doing anything on that magnitude, you know, like really hosting an entire award show. And mm -hmm. so I was a little nervous going into it. And you were just so just like amazing to me. You were like kind of coaching me. You allowed me to have some voice. You allowed me to kind of, you know, hey, this, I feel like it needs to sound like this. And you were like, all right, go ahead. You know, like you really allowed me to be a part of the process, um, which I think helped me to like do my best work. And so I really enjoyed Enjoyed working with you and I and I enjoy learning from you and all of that. So I'm very, you know, grateful that you decided to um you know, de, de facto kind of like mentor me on the cool. Um, I, I really do appreciate that because I think you're very talented and the work that you have put forth in the Black Podcasting Awards ceremony is, I think, proof of that. So I want to talk a little bit about how did you like, how did you become a part of the Black Podcasting Awards team? Like, how did you say, hey, I can direct it? Uh, so the bit of a backstory is that, um, so the person who started the BPAs and stuff for that, Georgianne, um, I met her through my wife actually. So it's, um, she was, I was approached by both of them to so say she wanted to do a podcast because I, um, I have a podcast network called Gifted Sounds Network. You and do? Yeah. So it's like, that's where we kind of have that connection. And then, okay. you know. She did a tweet, and I don't know if any, if you know the story. She did a tweet, went kind of viral, um, and you know she knew me. She knew that I, I work in podcasting. I've been doing it for a, a while now, over a decade now. Uh, it's like, um, and it's uh, you know just something that just kind of like put together. And then she asked me, you know, you know, would would I be down for like you know helping out with the production and stuff like that? Since that's kind of like what my specialty is. And I say, yeah, absolutely. You know, it was like something new. I've never done an award ceremony. <laughs> so um plus it was like in the middle of COVID. So it's like, okay, how can we yeah. make this happen? You know, Ain't got shit else do? to do, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So you know, and that's pretty much how that kind of came about because it was just kind of like in my wheelhouse there so it just kind of made sense so so what is your background like what what does what area do you come from what is your work history uh believe oh, it or no, not not work history i ain't saying work. It, this ain't no <laughs> this ain't no job interview or nothing like well, that I but started. i'm saying like what yeah how did you get your start yeah 
Uh, so the way I got my start in production work or media, I would say, was through uh, some friends of uh, f- friends of mine where we did, a, a uh, I guess, an online show or a streaming show. Okay. Um, this is before, uh, like, Twitch was big and all this other stuff. It was kind of like, it was like, uh, what is the name, I think? I forgot the name of it, but it was like some famous stream something TV back then. It was like... Uh, um, the Black... Um... I forgot. It's not Geo TV or something like that, but I forgot. I forgot the name I, of it. But... I know. I know what you're talking. About. Blog. Blog talk. Blog talk radio. Kind of like. Kind of like that. It's like in that they were all like it was a bunch of them in the, at the time, and yeah. it was like kind of like that. But that blog talk had them in a chokehold for a little while on the cool. Yes. <laughs> blog yes. talk radio had us in the chokehold. But yes, anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. But um, so we got together. So we made a show called uh, for if you have kids watching and turn them away. It's called Titty Talk Show. <laughs> Listen, and uh, Janelle Monet said free to titty. So that's what <laughs> you're gonna she, do. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Like, but um that show, I think you can find it in podcast form now. Um, we did, however, have rebrand that so far, but that's pretty much where I got started. It was just like online video live streaming thing. And from there that, cause it wasn't necessarily a podcast, but it was like in that realm of like new media, just creating these things. So I just kind of met people. We, we were lucky enough to get like a, a studio use in Manhattan, um, which was really cool at this like radio station. And from there just kind of like sparked this like interest in me to like, Oh, I want to edit. I want to produce. I want to do this stuff. And from there, like I kind of create like, like lifelong friends to just produce things really. And from, you know, that's when other people contacted me to help them make podcasts. I ended up doing like gaming journalism kind of halfway through (laughs) for like a number of years. What is gaming journalism? Is that like reporting (laughs) on the gaming industry? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I worked with um, Geeks Worldwide. They were, but uh, they were called Geeks with Wives. Now they're called Geeks Worldwide. So yeah, I did a podcast of my own called Pondering Nerds for a little while. That got picked up by another, like a retro gaming website. Um, so just kind of like through all that, just I was, you know, afforded to go to E3 and get like uh, press passes to go to all these different conventions, all these um, geeks love to go to. But I was there on, in a work capacity, you know, yeah. got to meet people and stuff like that. So um, because of that trajectory, just kind of like landed me into uh, like a, uh, you know, a producer, an editor, uh, engineer, um, live stream production, that sort of thing. So it's like kind of like, a lot of hats to just kind of create something to push it out and, to the masses. But you know, it makes sense because I mean, I, I love that that is your story and I'm saying it makes sense because gaming and is like a massive industry. It's, it's mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I think um it's one of the highest grossing industries in the world. You know, um, the mm-hmm. gaming industry is very, very strong and visuals are is an extremely important part of oh, that, the gaming yeah. industry because it's hard for people to get into the you know get into the the game or get into the challenge of it all if the visuals don't look right like i will turn a game off if the visuals <laughs> are not right you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so it it makes sense that that is your background because what we see in the Black Podcast and Awards show ceremony is very engaging. It's, it's you know, always something to catch your eye, keep you engaged and keep you alert, keep you just there and present and in the moment of celebration, you know, and like it kind of sets the, the tone. Um, and you do a really, really great job of drawing us in to mm. the show like I I be even even last year even though I hosted last year I watched it you know I watched it with everybody else you know what I'm saying <laughs> and so I watched it and I was just like oh my god this is so freaking good like I was very proud to be a part of that production talk a little bit about you know what your process is in creating the ceremony and like putting all of the pieces together because it's a lot of pieces. You got graphics, you got video clips, you got audio clips, you got, I mean, it's a lot of moving pieces, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, talk to us a little bit about the, your process and, and how you go about making that show come to life. 
So, where do I begin? Um, <laughs> this is like I think it's before or after I take a nice swig of something. So, because it's it's a lot of content to pull together. Mm -hmm. So to to go from uh, doing it all virtually to like you know what we have planned for this year and stuff like that, it's along the lines. Uh, sorry for that chime. That's a weather alert. Oh, <laughs> but um, I need to hear that. <laughs> good, good. Um, but um. The my process overall has more to do with what inspires me around that time, and it's usually uh starts with color, it's always mm -hmm. with color for me. It's always about do these color come like work together and stuff like that. And a lot of the visual cues kind of come from uh the logos that we have, the way we produce things already, kind of up until then, and then um. I like to look at trends, uh, the different design trends and stuff like that, but then see like, hmm, maybe I could do something a little different. Maybe I can really pull it out of the park this time. Right. And I do a, a lot of different mock-ups and, and like, especially in uh, Photoshop, a lot. Like I just kind of go there and I work on things, positioning, spacing and stuff like that. I try to make sure nothing, there's like no negative space or mm -hmm. is that was something kind of moving and just kind of just, you know, going that way. And um creating templates that's big part of my process it's like mm -hmm. i need to make everything into a template because it's going to be repeated throughout the show and needs to be able to plug in and certain things like that because once i have a template that means i have this theme that i can then work around and so any new thing that's being added i can then take that and like morph it into that and like the look mm -hmm. the movement the feel the sound and you know kind of just go that way yeah. um and that's you know pretty much how I, I I put it all together for the most part. And, um, I love it. I love it. And where do you like? Where do you draw your inspiration? Because, as far as I can see, I've I've watched every show. You know, mm -hmm. I, even before I was um you know a, a part of the organization or like you know working with the organization rather, I watched the show because it's the freaking Black Podcasting Awards. So why would I not watch it as a Black podcaster? You know. Um, I want to know what's out there. I want to know what Black people are creating in this space. Um, I want to hear what other people are producing. I want to um, just be aware, you know, of of what's going on. And I, I just want to support the community in that way. So I watch every ep every uh, ceremony show, okay? And year over year, um, the vibe is the same you know like it there's definitely a branded like vibe like you know when you when you see the black podcasting awards when you tune into the black podcasting awards it's gonna be a whole situation you already know it <laughs> because that has been established you know what i'm saying that's why i can't wait until we you know get to like an in-person kind of situation because mm -hmm. the vibe is already there so the people mm -hmm. gonna come there in with the anticipation of matching the vibe you know what i'm saying so there's that but it's also different every mm -hmm. year you know like there's it's just different things to look at and it's different colors and different graphics and you know like you also change it up every mm -hmm. year and like keep it very very interesting and so where does your inspiration for like the color scheme. I know you say you start with the color scheme, but like, where do you pull inspiration from to create that vibe year after year? Uh, to be on, to be honest, uh, it comes from um, mostly how when I look at something, how it makes me feel. Mm. Um, it needs to not necessarily inspire me, but to just kind of like look at that and then i imagine myself like as a consumer like or just a person who's watching whatever if i like this i wonder if mm -hmm. other people would like it and then put those things together and then it has to evoke this feeling of like that's fire you know yeah. <laughs> it's like you know that's yeah. so like i look at things you know for, if anything i would say when i think about bpa especially the ceremony i think about smoothness I think about like, you know, and that's usually the, always the the thing in my mind is like, it, it's, it's, uh, it's like black smoothness. It's, it's this, um, listen, non, I feel you know, like smooth is not a word that's utilized enough in the podcasting <laughs> industry. It's not, no, it's like, and it should, you know, 
Like it yeah. should be a part of our regular vocabulary because yeah. smooth describes so many things. Like it's a feeling, it's a look, it's a sound, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's so many things. Um, and I just wish that more people would like use the use word that. smooth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. That's like, a, it's almost like I'm designing um, the perfect entity in a way. It needs to live on its own. It needs to breathe on its own. It needs to have its own personality. So it's, it's almost like creation. So yeah. that's how I am, you know, not creation as in, you know, editing and stuff like that, like content creation. It's, it's, I look at it differently. Like this is, it's a, it's a, it's a thing now. It's something and it needs to live. Like I said, it needs to do its own thing. Um, because once I get that, when I feel, you know, it's like once I feel that like um, design, once I feel the way things are and then the way things flow, boom, it just kind of like, and then it, it all wraps for me. A big part of it that wraps for me, uh, uh, like it really wraps together to me is uh, the music as well. Mm -hmm. um, how it all ties together and it kind of needs to flow. It needs to have that smooth flow. It's like, you know, like uh, what's, what's the famous quote from Bruce Lee? You got to be like water. <laughs> <laughs> You have to flow, man. You got to go with the flow. And it's like, but it's a different type of flow. It's a different stream of consciousness that I'm trying yeah. to access most of the time. Um, I know that sounds a little vague and weird and spacey, but it's literally just how I'm looking at things. Like I, I notice small details in like design trends or maybe something I've worked on in the past, or maybe I designed something mocked up for, for a client and it didn't really work out. So then I take pieces of that and put mm -hmm. it together. You know, it's like, do I make it more complex this year or do I make it? A little bit more subtle and mm -hmm. have you know breathing movements or not and stuff like that so it's like you know it's like that type of um energy that i'm trying to tap into for the most part to like you know i i love that and listen i i am a little weird and spacey and <laughs> you know all of those things like i think everybody has a little bit of that in them but i don't think it's weird at all i think any creative um, that is listening to this right now is going to understand exactly what you're saying and understand exactly what you're meaning. It's it's kind of like you get in the zone, you know, yeah. that's really what mm -hmm. you're describing is getting in the zone. But at the end of the day, at the core of it, it's about tuning inward and and like checking in with yourself and and just tweaking it until it feels right, until mm -hmm. it feels like what you see in your head or what you hear in your ear is is what you have been able to manifest you know and i think that uh, any creative in any field whether it's podcasting whether it is uh you know music or you know entertainment acting whatever it is writing any creative i think can connect with this idea of it has to look and sound and feel right to me, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. how I know when it's right, when when it makes sense to me and it feels good to me. And then I just give that to the people, you know, um, because if I connect with it, then, you know, other people are going to connect with it as well. But that requires that you really tune into yourself, you know? And I think that's the difference between, you know, content that's good and content that's great is, mm -hmm. is that intentional tuning in and paying attention to those details to make sure that it really does feel good to you. It really does feel right to you. Mm -hmm. And what you end up with is a high quality production, right? Yeah. One of the things that we've been talking about this whole award season so far, you all have heard me say it over and over, don't get it twisted, okay? Don't get it twisted. A lot of times, well, not a lot of times, science dictates that the way the human brain works is that if something is lower priced, then we assume that it's lower value, right? We don't assign mm -hmm. the same level of value to it. That I'm not saying that science it has said right. that. You know what I'm saying? It's just a fact of the human condition. And so, but that does not always equate because there's other things like intention. There's other things that go into how something might be priced. And so, you know, we have been very intentional. The Black Podcasting Awards has been very intentional about making sure 
that this level of recognition is accessible to as many Black podcasters and creatives as possible, right? And so our fee for each category, the application fee is one of the lowest in the industry. It really is. It's one of the lowest. It's extremely fairly priced, extremely mm. fairly priced, right? Um, right? And But that does not mean that the value or the prestige of the award is any less because the, the choice of pricing was intentional to serve our community. Right. To serve our community, to make thing, to make this a thing that you can actually have and to make this a thing that you can actually experience in your life. But the production value. okay, I think is a clear indicator of the level of prestige of this award. I mean, the award is prestigious just because it is, you know, just because it's, you know, being celebrated by your people. And that's, I mean, nothing gets better. Nothing is better than being celebrated by your own people. Like that is the pinnacle, right? When your people say, no, I really rock with you. Like it just, it, it hit different. It just hits different, right? But the production value is such that it matches that level of prestige. And so I want you to talk a little bit about why it's important to you to create something that is at such a high level of production value in general, but also specifically for the Black Podcasting Awards. Um. I guess it comes from uh, uh, there's a there's a quote from um, there's a comedian what's his name Aziz Ansari he did a mm-hmm. show on Netflix called Master of None and when he won I think a Golden Globe or some some prestigious award for that particular show and he said um, yeah his show isn't really anything spectacular and he said that yeah we had to he said it's great that there are so many white shows that are did, that are so mediocre. He can do the same thing and get those prestigious awards. <laughs> <laughs> and which, you know, it always stuck to me where it's like, Oh, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's true. And it's interesting. Um, and, but it's like me, I don't like being um, mediocre. I don't like um, doing that sort of thing. When it's like, yes, yeah, some of the tools that I use are very expensive, but at the, at the end of the day, it's like, um, there are other things that I use that are not very expensive to, to get things done. And so it's like, it's important to show that even when we were locked down and everything like that, we can still produce something at, at a high level. And that was mm-hmm. different and, and, and flow differently. So it's like, and it's like a show that it, it is possible that, you know, I, you know, like I understand that people would like follow their favorite content creator, whatever, and stuff for like that. And, they're fine with that sort of thing. And it's like, mm-hmm. and that's fine. But it's like, I want to show that like there is another level that you can achieve this stuff. Um, you just need a little bit of push into this direction and a little bit of preparation and stuff and take this stuff serious. Yeah. Um, that you can do this sort of thing. Um, and it can lead you into multiple different aspects of life of your life. Like you can get a career out of this, you can um build your own empire <laughs> you know it's like you can mm-hmm. you can you know the sky's the limit really you know it's all about like who you know and where you can and like who sees your stuff and whatnot but it's um it's, it's very important to me to show that we're not fly by night it's it's not some you know run-of-the-mill operation where it's like you know we, you know, we got some people up you probably hear some noise in the background or whatever you know <laughs> we're gonna have sets you know we're gonna have segments we're gonna have um music we're gonna have this stuff it's like kind of put it together and just show a celebration and that's what i'm trying to show it's like the excellence of like what we're doing in the celebration it's like yeah no we we really mean business yeah so, you know so i really push hard for that it's like we have the tools and you can do it just do yeah. it you know yeah, yeah. that's what it is yeah i love that i really do it's you know th- this idea that um you know 
it's it's one of my pet peeves. I'm gonna be honest. You know, <laughs> I I be trying not to jump on my little soapbox lands, but sometimes mm -hmm. certain things just some things just really bother me. And I think one of the things that really frustrates me, especially in the creative space, um, and you know, I'm a podcaster, so in the podcasting space, but really in general, is that you know, I feel like sometimes we have this idea that to in order for something to be black enough, mm -hmm. you know, or, or to be black, blackity, black, 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 that it, it has to have kind of this rough around the edges kind of feel. Right. right? Um, and listen, ain't nothing wrong with rough around the edges. If that's your vision, that's your vision. And mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. Like there is a place for that. Um, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that, to produce a high quality show is out of somebody's reach. Like you, you can definitely, we, we have seen black creators produce at an extremely high level and at the, at the risk of being cliche, Issa Rae, you know, she mm -hmm. started on YouTube, but even with her little YouTube show, she still produced something that was at a high level, you know, and the, mm -hmm. high, and the level just got higher once she got a little money behind her, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, which is, which is, you know, that's ideal for any creative that's serious about creating and producing high quality work. I, I find myself saying that all the time, like, you know, I'm very proud of the, of the, the work that I have put forth and, and the, trajectory of my career thus far but i i daydream about the day when i have a real budget and i can really like produce something at a high level because i can afford all of the pieces necessary to make that happen but right. until then i'm going to use the resources that i have at my disposal and create the very best that i can with those resources right just very because true. i don't have a 500 dollars microphone doesn't mean that i can't still work toward getting quality sound just because i don't have you know a, a editor and that doesn't mean that I can't still use like orphonic or something like that to try to level out my sound or just mm -hmm. balance everything out, clean it up a little bit, you know, learn just the basics. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. there are things that I can do to take my production to the next level, you know? And so seeing something like the black podcasting awards and seeing the high production value and, you know, we ain't got no money like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, if we're going to be all the way real, you know, the, the organization is still young and it's still mm -hmm. growing and we need all the support that we can get because we, you know, we are building something here. Um, and, and it's worthwhile. It's a worthwhile investment. Um, but imagine if, if we, if the organization is able to produce at this high of a level, on a shoestring budget, imagine what can be done once mm -hmm. the community really supports and surrounds the organization and, and uplifts the organization and the industry takes notice of what's happening with and, and the work that the uh, that everyone connected to the organization, including the winners, including the nominees, um, is putting forth, you know? So mm -hmm. I love that, you know, you, because of who you are, um, your intention is to kind of show that mm -hmm. this is a thing that we can have. This is a thing that we can do. Um, and it's a thing that we're capable of. And, you know, I, I just, I'm a huge fan of yours, Lance. I really <laughs> am. In case you didn't know, and your wife, I love, oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> like she's so sweet. Um, I, I really enjoy y'all. So yeah. we are kind of winding down on our time. Um, but I just want to give you an opportunity to tell us a little bit about what we can expect for the 2023 ceremony. Now, I know you can't give all the details and things like that, but just let give us a little peek into your mind of what your thought process is for this year. Uh, this year, what is what I'm currently leaning towards is a lot of uh, bright colors, bold mm -hmm. colors. Um, so a lot of you probably see a lot of lines and stuff like that, things that are moving subtly um, around and stuff like that. You know, um, a lot of um, rounded edges, you know, 
It's my favorite um, kind of edge. <laughs> yeah, just like, like you know, I'm still, you know, like again, smooth. It's just kind of like you know, in that in that type of lane, and it's like, um, cool music as well. I'm hoping to get some really cool musicians this year. Um, to kind of like tie that into that feel is almost like coming out of summer, going into the the new the new uh, season and stuff like that. So it's kind of like ah, oh, this is a wind down, but it's like energetic and bright. And it's like it would mm-hmm. catch your attention. So it's like that's basically in the, that type of direction that I'm trying to you know I'm mocking up right now, like Photoshop and what uh, to to get that going. So hopefully I can get that out soon. <laughs> I'm excited, Lance. I'm very excited. And I feel like, listen, I didn't already started looking for my outfits for, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to do costume changes this year, Lance. You know what I'm saying? I like it. I like it. Yes. So I, I have already started the process of looking for my outfits and things. I need to get that color scheme for you so I can make sure I'm not clashing. Okay. <laughs> um, but I am very much looking forward to working with you again. I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, seeing what the new, uh, you know, graphics and everything look like. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, learning about new podcasts and hearing all of the nominees and things like that. Like I get excited about the whole process, um, you know, because it it just I'm I'm so appreciative to be a part of this and um, to be a part of just I love me some black folks. OK. And uh, any opportunity that I get to celebrate our amazing awesomeness, I am I am definitely here for it. And so um, go ahead and let the people know, Lance, where they can find you if they want to work with you after the ceremony <laughs> is completed because he's focused right now. Okay. Oh, yeah, but you can start man. sending them contracts though. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You can start <laughs> setting up them meetings or whatever. Um, let them, let them know how they can get in touch with you. Sure thing. Um, if you want to, you know, uh, I guess contract me for work. Um, it's uh, you can get me at Lance John at gifted sounds.com. Or you could just go to the website, giftedsoundstudios.com. That's actually brand new. So you can see some of the services that we offer there. Um, so if you want to like work with us in that way, if you want to be on the on the on the podcast network, which we, we always accept in people, it's it's actually free to join it. Um, you can um, you know, if you want to be on a network, it does come with some certain perks. Um, and we do have other things that you could pay for if you want to. It really depends on what your level of like budget is and stuff like that. But you can also just contact me at like uh, Lance John at giftedsounds.com, which is like the best way to do it. Yeah. So y'all make sure y'all do that. Check out Lance. Make sure you go to Instagram. Follow the Black Podcasting Awards at Black Pod Awards on Instagram. Uh, make sure that you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend, okay? Applications close July 31st. July 31st. So what's today? The 27th? That means you got yep. 28, 29, 30, 30. You got four days. Four days. Okay. Listen, yes, I pulled out the fingers because I wanted to <laughs> make sure it was accurate. You have four days to get in your application. Don't forget, if you started your application and you ain't finished your application, you have not submitted until you have submitted. Okay. So if you started and saved, that is not the same as submitting. So if you're not sure whether or not you submitted, that means you probably didn't. You need to log back in and make sure you get that done because you cannot win if you do not apply. Okay, you cannot win if you do not apply and you know you're going to apply because you know you want to win. So go ahead and put in your application and make it happen. Okay. All right. That's all that we have for y'all this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, my name is Latrice Sampson Richards. And as always, we love y'all and we appreciate y'all. And until next time, be well. Bye, y'all. Bye.